Welcome back to Energy Scapes Ocean and Space, uh, a book that I've been into recently that I thought we should have a conversation about because it's quite interesting again, uh, is this one, Antarctica's Hidden History uh, and its Corporate Foundations of Secret Space Programs by Dr. Michael Seller. Uh, I found it quite intriguing. I haven't quite finished reading it, but I got through most of it and I thought we'd discuss a few points or aspects that were brought up, uh, which are intriguing to say the least. Um, and there's a lot of conversation here about a woman called Maria Orsic, which people may or may not have heard of, because uh, her life seems to be quite a, quite a mystery. But um, the evidence suggests that she was the first person to successfully design and build a, a propellant as propulsion craft or spacecraft as early as the 1920s in tests and trials. And that comes up in, can, comes up in this book. Um, and that the first successful um, production craft of uh, anti-gravity was in the 1930s, according to the documentation and discussion presented in this book. Uh, and it's such a hard, she's a hard woman to find anything out about anymore. Even Wikipedia doesn't have a page on her um, that's been taken down as well. But evidence suggests that she was born in the 1800s, late 1800s in Austria. Uh, um, and a lot of her life is uh, now shrouded in history. But apparently she was able to achieve autonomic writing and what was found to be ancient Sumerian. And when that language was translated, it was actually instructions on how to build these propellers, propulsion craft. Um, the other thing was that she was apparently a member of a group called the Vril Society. Uh, which was associated with the Thule group uh, back in World War II as well. I've just got some notes here. Um, so we can go back uh, and there's a, there was a former CIA agent uh, with some acronyms or anonymous names like Stein and Cooper um, back then that actually disclosed that he knew of some of this information uh, going back to the 1920s and he was interviewed he was interviewed by Linda Moulton Ho in 1998 about this um, historical um, event and development of these craft. Um, but he withdrew, drew, withdrew from public life until about 2013. Now, he was also interviewed by Richard Dolan uh, in 2013, and the information was released in a citizen's hearing on disclosure presided over by six former U.S. Uh, members of Congress back at the time. So if we carry on from there, um, we've got from that disclosure examination of files on UFOs and extraterrestrial life that was submitted uh, from the US uh, Air Force Base at Fort Bell, Belfort, I think it's pronounced back then. Uh, and apparently that some of this um, technology was in a highly classified S4 facility uh, back as far as 1958 in Area 51, where they had acquired some of these uh, Nazi or Nazi Germany flying saucers that had been developed back then. Um, and with some, we can go back to, there's another book here on Area 51 by Annie Jacobson that looks into the um, circumstances surrounding uh, technology development at this this um, base throughout recent history. And if I carry on, uh, the, this real society that Orsic was supposedly involved in was shrouded in mystery, but apparently she was tied up with the SS during World War II uh, and, and Nazi Germany. But the uh, information is, is not very accessible, but they were very much interested in development of, of weapons or super weapons uh, to uh, keep the war machine going at the time. So whether it existed, whether the real society existed at all is still uh, anecdotal. We can't we don't have actually conclusive evidence except for the fact that it might have been associated with the Thule Society formed in 1918 by Baron Rudolf von Seppendorf. I think that's how his name is pronounced. So carrying on with that, um, 
What we've got then is a scientist called uh, Schumann who was apparently tied up with studying all sex information in about in the early 1920s and he was a professor at the Technical University of Munich and headed the electrophysics laboratory. So he was very interested in all six designs uh, and their application in high voltage electrostatics. So he was also very familiar with the work of Victor Schorberger. Now his name comes up quite a lot uh, in, in various books. Uh, his name comes up in Andromeda, The Secret Files, uh, and the, S, the flying machines of the SS that were supposedly developed and and also uh, briefly mentioned in Operation Paperclip as well uh, and apparently he was uh, so he was familiar with Victor Schorberger's work and his work on implosion as a fundamental natural process of energy transference and according to Schumann he shared in Schorberger's view uh, and that were discovered in the um, alleged SS files after World War II that they, they had in fact worked with this technology and developed, developed it. And that corroborates uh, Childress's book on the involvement of SS in developing this technology. So not only Shawberger's implosion work, but apparently working with all sex information and technology and perhaps some non-human assistance in developing these craft way back then during World War II and after. Um, and carrying on from there, uh, just a little bit more information. There was another person called William Tompkins, now William Bill Tompkins, who worked for decades with various US companies in the secret design supposedly of these uh, propellants, propulsion craft or anti gravity craft and non-conventional systems or propulsion systems. And he claims um, to have worked with Navy spy oper operatives during World War II who infiltrated Germany's secret propulsion and spacecraft development program. So, of course, after World War II, uh, Operation Paperclip, they were very uh, keen to get hold of some of these scientists and, and what they developed uh, before the Russians um, got them and the Cold War took hold as well and get in on the game on this technology and take it back to America. Um, and so I might leave it at there for now. That's that's the gist of this book by Dr. Michael Stella. And of course, William Tompkins got his own book come out here, uh, selected by extraterrestrials too. That's uh, um, a very interesting read. I've been over that before. So I'm cross-referencing a lot of this information that's coming out with books that I've read or have acquired and are going to read. To read sorry. Um, so there's another whole lot of information for you um, that needs to be discussed and talked about it but it brings me to the conclusion if you consider the saying that all roads lead to Rome I would suggest in my last few years of work that all roads lead back to the SS uh, during World War II and what they acquired or got hold of from work that was being done before World War II and carried on with subsequently afterwards uh, outside of Germany so there's some, of this, there's some thoughts for you. Um, so get on the discussion and comments and we'll talk again soon.